Hi everyone, how are you all doing? Is digital art cheating? Well, you have no idea how often I'm asked this very question. Just go to Cora Digest and type in this very question. You'll be bombarded with it. In this post, I will try to clarify what digital art is and if it's considered cheating or not. Okay, digital art, is it cheating? Well, think of it as cleaning the floor. Do we still exclusively use a broom and sit on our knees to scrub the floor? Nah, we use a vacuum cleaner and a simple or maybe more advanced kind of mop or even a polishing machine to make our job a bit more convenient. Times change, technology advances, and it isn't only exclusive to cleaning, transport or for example digitalizing data in a hospital. It translates to art too. Us artists wouldn't be able to meet up with the current demands if we didn't have the technology to help us out. But you for sure can't build an amazing transport vehicle without the knowledge of technology, comfort, laws, safety and what more. The same counts for art. There are basics, many, many basics which need to be learned rather sooner than later. For example, here's a list. You need to keep in mind the lighting, highlights, local colors, perspective, you need to know your color theory, you need to know how shadows work and what kind of colors they have under which circumstances, um, you need to know what cast shadows are and how they work, how atmosphere works, the mood from a painting, it's the overall mood from the whole painting, anatomy, yeah, we actually study medical images for that, we need to know about storytelling, shape language, we need to master different styles, we need to study history and historic painters, and that list goes on and on and on. In other words, it's a mastery like any other profession. Technology can make the workflow speed up and makes it possible to test things without ruining your original painting, but it won't ever make you a master of arts. For every style there is another approach, for every subject another technique. If you draw crappy by hand, your digital art will be crappy too. The digital tablet is not a magical tool. Yes, things can be done quicker, but without techniques, you can be as quick as you want, but if your art sucks, nobody will hire you or buy your art. In the past, one artist would take months, sometimes even years, to finish an art piece. Nowadays, we live in a quick world, one where everyone wants to have the work done yesterday. This puts an enormous pressure on artists. This is a fact and any kind of technology won't change that. This causes many artists to break under their pressure and never get to flourish, let alone getting a decent salary out of their work. But current technology does make our work a bit easier, just to help us speed up our workflow. It's still a very tough and competitive market, mind you, but with current technology, we are a bit better suited to the work that's asked of us. So, how does digital art actually work? Well, the quickest answer is exactly the same as traditional art, but that answer would be a bit too simple. We work just like traditional artists on a canvas, only instead of a linen canvas, it's a digital one. I, for example, use a Huion Canvas Pro 13 as we speak. I draw right on the screen as if it were a linen canvas. The advantage here is that it doesn't matter that much how big you want to draw. You just zoom out on your work and as long as your computer can handle the size and details of your artwork and you are able to spot any mistakes that will scream at you when it's used on the original size, a smaller canvas could be considered a bit more convenient. But size considered, we still have to draw our line art, pick our color scheme, pinpoint a light source, have a sense of understanding of anatomy, landscapes or architecture and so on. Also, we draw our art line by line, stroke after stroke. Some people may use the fill tool for their particular kind of art. Is this ideal if one works with big flat untextured surfaces? This you could compare with someone cutting out a piece of paper in a certain color and stick it to their canvas. But most artists, and then I talk about those that tend to call themselves illustrators or concept artists, for example, draw every stroke by hand, just like any traditional artist would. So what are the advantages of digital painting compared to traditional art? 
Well, of course that's debatable, but as a traditional artist going digital, to me they are the following. It takes less physical space when you work, you just have your computer, you don't need a whole separate room to do your work. The storage is almost non-existent, there is no mess to clean, that's a big plus. It's forgiving and easy to explore. When you draw something in color A, you can easily switch to all the other colors in the spectrum to see if something else works better. If you properly work in a separate layer, say for example, the basic colors and the lights and the shadows are in different layers of their own, you can pull out one layer, say for example, light, and change its strength or color to match the rest of the piece or change the mood. For example, change from midday light to sunset light by making the tones a bit warmer throughout the piece. It's more efficient. We live in a world where art needs to be digitalized. And when it's a traditional piece, especially when you're working for a company that's abroad or you make concept art for computer games, which is a huge market, it's not easy to digitalize traditional art. You need a specialized company to do that for you, as a picture won't usually cut it. This takes precious time from you and your employer. It's easier to send a concept for approval that's already digital. Like that, you can know within minutes if your idea is what your employer was looking for instead of days or weeks. Textures are easier to apply. You customize one once and can use it endlessly after. It's like gathering fabrics with special patterns to use on your traditional paintings, but the digital version won't wear out. It's easy to duplicate, not only to send to your clients, but also for sales. Like this, an artist can always ask a low price for a product, but still get an hourly rate or even more, and the customers will be very happy with the good deal they got out of it. And of course, it's cheaper on the long run. Investing in a computer costs some money, but not near as much as the supplies one burns through as a traditional artist through the years. Also, dots don't take up any supplies other than time. But of course, there are some disadvantages too. There is no such thing as an original. This doesn't mean you can't have a one of a kind. When you take this up with the artist, they won't share the full-size, high-quality piece with anyone else and they will use only thumbnails and small images only to display the work on social media and in their portfolio. I do this a lot myself with my own animal portraits. Also, the possibilities are unlimited. You may think this is a positive thing, but nah. You can have any brush, any texture, any color at any moment within your drawing. Infinite possibilities can make choosing a direction a lot harder. Some people prefer, of course, the feel of a pencil in their hand. Although tablet designers do their best to imitate the feel of working by hand, it's never the same. To make things a little more interesting, there are also different kinds of digital art. There is the actual digital art like we spoke about before, but there is also something called design and matte paintings. Design is something you see in logos, school books, commercials, and so on. It's a combination of shapes, texts, white spaces, and color combined to create a very clear and very understandable message. Art, though, is the exact opposite. Art, as in drawing and illustrating, is done to make people wonder. You create a question with your artwork instead of answering one. You want to make sure the viewer wants to see what's around the corner, or what that creature actually is, or how it would behave. You want to send your audience away wondering. That's the essence of art, and it doesn't matter if you do that through a fully hand-painted artwork, or through a matte painting. A matte painting, you ask? What's that? Well, ever wondered how the landscapes were made in Avatar, or Lord of the Rings, for example? Well. That was done by an absolute master in his crafts, Dylan Cole. He takes actual pictures, edits them by combining the pictures, and draws big parts of them as well. Elements are taken from a picture and put into a huge drawing to make it all look like a real world. This may sound like cheating, but I as a digital artist that knows her profession quite well won't be able to pull off anything near what Dylan Cole does as a living. 
it's an absolute mastery and in it you can create effects that won't be possible to reach when everything would be completely hand drawn. If you really want to get a feel of what it takes to create a matte painting, check out the tutorial of my all-time favorite artist Walid Fagali. I'll leave a link down below. Then what about photo bashing? Well, everyone knows that, I think. But unlike matte paintings, there isn't actually any drawing involved. When you photo bash, you take elements of different pictures and add them together to create something new. Is it art? Well, if you create something new, you could call it an art form. But if you just change the background to make you look like you went to Hawaii and had a nice cocktail in your hand, no, this is not art. If something can be called art, it's a fine line. Usually, anything created by a living being with the intention to create something new and original could be considered art. But practice is art too. You may not want to wave around with a copied artwork of your favorite artist. This your own style is incorporated, it's still art. Also, a painting made by an elephant could be called art. So, therefore, what is art, really? I would love to hear your opinion on that question. Thanks again for joining me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. As usual, you know the story. I'll see you around next time. Have a nice day.